And that's the title of the message, The Thief. And those that are going to Bible study, we've got to see The Thief a couple times now. Amen? Amen. And uh, what an awesome story. In fact, uh, go ahead and go to the next slide. I'm going to start reading from Luke chapter 23, verse 32 through 43. And if um, the slide's up there, it says, Two other men, both of them criminals, were also led out to be put to death with Jesus. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified Jesus there and the two criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Next slide says, Jesus said, Forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. They divided his clothes among themselves by throwing dice. The people stood there watching while the Jewish leaders made fun of him. He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah whom God has chosen. Next slide goes on to say in verse 36, The soldiers also made fun of him. They came up to him and offered him cheap wine and said, Save yourself if you're the king of the Jews. And above him were written these words, This is the king of the Jews. And in verse 39, next slide, One of the criminals hanging there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other one, however, rebuked him saying, Don't you fear God? You received the same sentence he did. Next slide. Ours, however, is only right because we are getting what we deserve for what we did. But he has done no wrong. And he said to Jesus, Remember me, Jesus, when you come as king. And Jesus said to him, I promise you that today you will be in paradise with me. Next slide. You know, a lot of times when we go through trials, our reaction is the best preaching you can do. When we go through storms, our reaction is the best preaching that we can do. And this thief's life was changed, not by any preaching, but just by the reaction of what Jesus was going through. Amen. We can learn a lot today from this message. John Wesley, in the the 1700s was returning home from a service one night and he was robbed. The guy took a couple dollars off of him and a whole lot of Christian material. So he was probably upset when he got to wherever he was going because he mainly stole a bunch of Christian tracks. But as he was running away, John Wesley yelled at him, Stop! I have something else for you. The guy turned and looked at him kind of startled and John Wesley said, If you ever live a day to where you start regretting the lifestyle that you're living, I want to tell you, that Jesus Christ's blood was shed for you and he loves you. All you got to do is just let him know. Amen. Years and years later, after that incident, a man come up to him while he was preaching. He'd finished preaching that night. And a guy walked up to him and says, I'm the man that stole those tracks from you years ago. I'm a, I'm a businessman now and I have you to thank for everything. And he says, no, not me, but Jesus Christ. Because his blood was shed for you. But even more amazing than that thief's conversion, the one that stole a few tracts from John Wesley, is the conversion we're going to talk about today. And in verse 32, we read that the two other men were crucified next to Jesus, one on his right and one on his left. You know, he was, Jesus was put between them. And, and a thief, <laughs> I mean, a thief on each side, and Jesus is put between them. And I... Hey, normally that these would have been put together they were probably a gang or they belonged to one another they knew each other we get the impression that they did anyway and yet instead of putting these two together which what would be more natural they put Jesus in between the two thieves and that was done because God orchestrated that for us to have a message that will change us for the rest of our lives God sees beforehand and he he had this all set up, this cross in between these two thieves. There's no accidents in life, folks. No coincidence that this was done this way. For, thief, for the thief to be on the right and the thief to be on the left and Jesus to be in the middle. It was important for Jesus to be in the middle for several reasons. The first one we'll go to is the next slide. It says, it meant both thieves could hear him. Mo both thieves could hear him. Have you ever tried to talk to somebody? If, if both of these were over here talking to one another, they wouldn't hear Jesus. But with Jesus being right in the middle, both thieves got to hear Jesus. And you know during this such agony as a crucifixion, the normal thing 
the very common thing to do is to curse at the people that just crucified you. Spit on the soldiers below you. And to be mad because you're dying. You're cursing and you're swearing up a storm. And you know that your time has come. But in contrast, what did they hear? They heard him pray. They heard him pray, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Both the thieves could hear him. Both the thieves had an opportunity to have a change of heart. They could hear everything that Jesus said. Two dying men, guilty, about to face their maker and don't even know their maker. That's a scary thing. They had had a chance to hear some good news in this desperate situation. And they could hear him because he was in the middle. The next thing, the next slide, it meant both thieves could see him. That, have you ever tried to get somebody to move out of your way when you're trying to talk to somebody? And Jesus was in between them. So anytime that the one thief looked over to talk to the other thief, Jesus was in the way. And when the other thief looked over to talk to the thief, Jesus was in the way. They could see Jesus. Amen. They could see him. That wasn't a mistake. God orchestrated this. What, what powerful message with just his actions so whenever these two friends wanted to talk to one another, Jesus <laughs> was in the way. That's pretty neat if you've never thought of that before. And at the same time, they had to have seen the sign above him that said, this is Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Written in three languages, two of which most common were probably known by these thieves. So two of the three languages they were able to read and say, this is the King of the Jews. They could see that. And so reading this title, they read the first track of ever. So if you ever wonder where the tracks came from, there's your first track. Amen. Jesus is the king of the Jews. Amen. <coughs> the next thing, next slide, there was an amazing request. It's set up for an amazing request that some cannot believe today. And it happened. He said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. One of the thieves said, Jesus, remember me. When you come into your kingdom. Now the reason that's an amazing request. Is because can you imagine. You're riding your motorcycle. A way you shouldn't be riding it. Doing wheelies or something you shouldn't have been doing. Something really stupid. Wearing no protective gear. Everything that you could have done wrong. You did wrong. And then you crashed and burned in front of all your friends. Okay. And then when you did. Your friends came up to you. And they looked at you. And they kicked you and said. You're stupid. It's your fault you're there. You should die. And you mock your friend for about 30 minutes. And then you realize he's going to be okay. And you're like, hey man, can I still come to your party tonight? <laughs> that ain't going to happen, is it? Well, thank God Jesus is Jesus. That he is the God, the one and only. Amen. Because this thief had just got done mocking Jesus Christ right along with the other thieves. But he says, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, will you remember me? Can I come to your party tonight? Yeah, right. Thank God Jesus is a forgiving God. Amen. So, he, the thief admitted that he was afraid to die. He admitted that he, that, that he was wrong. He admitted that he feared God himself. Hmm. That means he's not an agnostic or an atheist. He's just lost. He's just confused. Amen. So many of us are. So many of us have been and we're not anymore. Amen. But we got friends that are. They don't know. How can you not know if you open up the word with a true heart and read things like this? He admitted he deserved punishment. They were getting punished. He says we're getting what we deserved. He admitted that Jesus Christ was innocent. He knew that this man was being hung for no, no crime being committed. But this man has done nothing wrong, he said. We're getting what we deserve, he said. These are the things before he made that amazing request. Why did he make that amazing request? Because he knew that there was life after death. And he saw something special. Which takes us to the next slide. He had amazing sight. He had amazing sight. There's five things this thief saw that you need to see today. If you've never got to see. There's five things that he saw. Five things that change this man's attitude about his eternal destiny forever. And the first one, next slide, he saw the weakness, not the power of Jesus Christ. 
He saw the weakness. Can you imagine that? Think about that for a minute. He, his conversion happened at a time when the outward appearance of Jesus was at its all-time low. The lowest that it had ever been. He, he was at his weakest point when he had absolutely no power at all. No power that could be seen. It was the power of love that kept him on the cross. Amen. Remember, this thief would have marched through the streets of Jerusalem. And he would have seen Jesus not being able to carry his cross while him and his friend were able to carry theirs. He would have seen the bloody mess that he was in. He was at his absolute weakest. Not in the power, but the weakest point that Jesus had ever been at. Forsaken by his friends. Mocked in the public. Slowly dying on a cross right next to him. Who's also slowly dying on a cross. And if he had the knowledge of a coming Messiah it would have been a conquering king like all of them that did believe it would have been a conquering king a powerful mighty king liberating his people amen it certainly would not be the sight that was in front of him now it took incredible faith folks for a thief to trust a dying weak helpless human being that's powerful in fact his faith was astonishing. The next thing that we see in the next slide. He saw beyond the suffering of Jesus Christ. He saw beyond the suffering. This thief, like the Roman centurion later says in the passage, never encountered a crucif crucifixion victim like any other ever before. Jesus' conduct, his attitude... In fact, everything about Jesus was totally different than anybody had ever been crucified before. He went willingly because he loves you and me. This documented. The thief could literally see and hear not the usual cursing of God, but the prayer, Father, asking the Father to forgive them. Yes. Calmness, love, and forgiveness. Praying to a God that could forgive him, maybe? Next slide. He saw that Jesus was innocent. He sees that Jesus is innocent. Being in the presence of Jesus made this thief feel ugly. Being in the presence of Jesus made this thief feel dirty. Being in the presence of this thief made Jesus Christ, or made this thief feel ashamed because he was in the presence of Jesus Christ. And we do today too. The closer we get to Jesus, the more we feel ashamed. The closer we get to Jesus, the more ugly our sin is to us because we become aware of it. The closer we get to Jesus, the more we know how dirty we really are. And that's why we don't want to give in and ask him to be the Lord of our lives because then we have to deal with the sins that are in our lives. So we try to come up with something else. But this thief saw Jesus was innocent and he saw how guilty he was. And he confessed his ugliness. He confessed his ugliness and his guilt. He says, we are punished justly. And that's what we have to do as well. Next slide. He saw the future. He sees beyond the temporary cross and glimpses the everlasting kingdom of our Lord. Now that's powerful. The only way for that to happen is to have been a manifestation of God himself on this thief. Amen. He said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. After... All in a few hours, he's going to be dead. He's going to be dead. And he knows that Jesus ain't getting down either. Amen? He knows they're both going to be dead. But he knows that Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews, has a kingdom. And he realizes that. And he wants to have part of that. He saw him much more than a dying victim. He had faith to believe that he was going somewhere else. And he wanted to be part of it. Amen? And he saw his own need. The next slide. He saw his own need. He saw the need to repent. And ask for forgiveness. One of the criminals who hung there. Hurled all insults at him. And then he says. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and save us. But what does this thief do? He says. Don't you fear God? He said. Since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly. But he is innocent. And he's asking Jesus to take him. To remember him. He's asking Jesus to remember him. Just remember me. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. This man had a deathbed conversion. 
this man at the last minute we call it the 11th hour of salvation or a deathbed conversion and so many people die too quick to have this you don't want to wait till this because you may not get this amen young people die all the time around us half my age in motorcycle and car accidents every day some recently that you probably know did they know Jesus Christ as their Lord? They're not going to be on the cross having another chance. They're not going to be in a deathbed having a chance. It's just over. They either did or they don't, folks. This verse, these verses go so good and give us insight regarding our salvation. Amen. Next slide. Regarding our salvation. Insights to the nature of salvation. Are you saved? Do you truly have Jesus Christ in your heart? The priests were mocking Jesus. The crowd opposed him. The crowd wanted nothing to do with him. His friend and partner in crime mocked Jesus. Yet this man asked Jesus for salvation. When you come into your kingdom, remember me. Next slide. Salvation is all grace, folks. It's all grace. Nothing but grace. There was nothing in this man that he could bargain with. He was a condemned sin sinner that who deserved death and was going to die. It wasn't like he could change things. It couldn't. He's not like a man in prison that says, hey, I'm going to change or be reformed. I'm going to do better when I get out. No, you're going to die in a few hours. So there was nothing to bargain with. Hey, Jesus, I promise when we get done with this, I'll be a better person. No, it was all grace, folks. Nothing but grace. He saved us not because of the righteous things that we have done, but because of his mercy. Paul said that. I wish I had. Amen. Glory to God. He didn't deserve forgiveness and he couldn't earn salvation. He got it strictly because of God's grace. Next slide. Salvation is personal. Do you have a personal relationship? Now what I mean by personal is that remember he said you twice. I tell you that you will be with me in paradise today. The other thief didn't make it folks. Think about it. The other thief didn't repent. The other thief didn't ask Jesus and Jesus said I'm telling you you will be with me. Amen. Salvation is personal. Are you on the list? Have you asked Jesus into your heart? Does he run your life? Amen. Salvation is immediate. Next slide. Salvation is immediate. The thief said, when you come into your kingdom. He didn't know when. He just knew there was. But he says, I don't. What he, in other words, what he's saying is, <coughs> I don't know when. But when you do. When you come. But when it does come. Please Lord just remember me. Amen. And Jesus answered him. I tell you the truth. Today you will be in paradise with me. Woo, isn't that awesome? That's immediately. The man hoped for some kind of help in the future. The man hoped for something to happen. But Jesus gave him forgiveness that very day. Salvation is immediate. Some people and all these other different uh, folks that are studying different religions are finding well if you'll do this if you'll do that or you know we've got to have this perfect nothingness and then this perfect nothingness will get us to this other stage in our life and good luck <laughs> when we receive Jesus the gospel receives us right then amen isn't that awesome next slide salvation is a relationship salvation is a relationship yes it's personal and it's a relationship. The thief asked only to be remembered. But what did Jesus say? Hey, when I get there, I'll remember you. Uh-uh. He says, I'm telling you today, you will be with me. Isn't that exciting? It's a relationship with Jesus. Being with him. With me. Yes, that's exciting. Amen. Think of the moral gap between the thief and salvation. Between the thief and the Savior. Think of this. This, this moral gap, this chasm is huge. All this sin and the cross bridges the gap of that chasm. The thief's a violent murderer, rebel, whatever. And the other is perfectly, he's the perfect unblemished lamb of God. A huge chasm and the cross. You just walk right across. Amen. What a relationship. And the last slide. Salvation is perfect. The Lord promised paradise. And paradise is perfect. It's in paradise is perfect in every way. The Garden of Eden was paradise. The Garden of Eden still exists. Amen. 
in the Garden of Eden is in, in heaven. Amen. Salvation is perfect. A place of beauty. A place of fruitfulness. Enjoyment. A place of plenty. The tree of life is waiting for us in the Garden of Eden in heaven. Amen. It's available. You know, we lost it because of one man's disobedience. And we gain it back because of one man's obedience to die on the cross when he didn't want to do it. I pray that each and every one of you know him. And it would be not right to give you a chance to get to know him. Because maybe you feel like you're on that cross right now. Maybe you are. Somebody 10 years old and somebody 100 years old is going to die before it gets dark. And maybe it's one of us. Maybe you are on that cross and you only got a few minutes to live. And you haven't asked Jesus into your heart. So every head bowed, no eyes closed. Let's make sure you all have an opportunity. That way I don't have to answer to him. It's a pretty selfish reason, ain't it? Well, glory to God. If there's anybody in here that's never asked Jesus Christ into your heart, or at one time you did and you've turned your back on him and you're no longer there, you need to go ahead and come on up here. Is there anybody? Glory to God. We're all in the body of Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this powerful message, Lord. I also pray for anybody that may have quenched the Spirit and don't know you. And that they allowed, uh, they allowed Satan to keep him from being part of the body today. Don't, 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 let, don't let that happen before it gets dark, Lord. If there's one single individual that doesn't know you, that they become part of the body before it gets dark today. Father God, I ask for your traveling mercies on all of us today. And don't let us miss the divine appointments that you have for us. Thank you for this powerful message. Let us continue to think about the thief. Let us think about the thief. Because we're all a thief. And let us be thankful. And accept your son. For dying on the cross for us. Yeah. It's in Jesus name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Glory to God. Amen.